Okay, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Brian Co-Francesco, and I am the District Leadership Development Coordinator and a member of the Kiwanis Club of Meriden, Connecticut. I'm excited to welcome you to tonight's workshop, Using Zoom for Club Meetings. It's great to see so many uh, returning Kiwanians with us tonight and some new faces, too, here on Zoom. And I want to make sure we give a big welcome to those who are watching live on Facebook, too. This is the 13th session in our virtual workshop series of weekly learning opportunities. And we hope you're enjoying them so far and that you will remember to encourage your fellow club members to join us every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. If any of your members are not receiving our emails, you can send us an email at education at newenglandkiwanis.org and we will take a look. Um, we're going to be releasing our April schedule in the next seven to 10 days or so. So we wanna make sure we have as many updated emails as possible. Uh, most of you have all signed up for obviously this month's sessions, but if you'd like to sign up for another, or if you have a fellow member who wants to jump in and join us, we'll also drop a link in the chat to the registration for our other workshops this month. A reminder that these workshops do have the potential to count towards interclubs on your monthly secretary's reports. If your club has 20 or fewer members and you have two members here tonight, or if your club has 21 to 30 members and you have three members here, or if your club has 31 or more members and you have four members present, this does count as an interclub. And if you do have enough members at this workshop, you get to report an, an interclub with each individual club that's in attendance with us. And some nights that's up to 20, 25, or 30 interclubs. So to help everyone determine the number of interclubs that they can report, uh, you can see some people are already jumping right in. We ask all attendees to just send a quick message in the chat with your name and club. And if you do have enough members here tonight, you can write down the names of the clubs or you can click the dot, dot, dot in the chat section and save the chat so you can review the information later. Um, we also have David Griffin, the newest member of our education committee who is our interclub liaison. And he is going to be taking attendance during our weekly workshops based on the responses in the chat, which is why it's so important to make sure you put your name and club in there. We will then post that list in the Google Drive and we'll have a link to that folder in your confirmation email each week. And we'll also put that in the chat tonight so you can get to the drive for you. Uh, I wanna thank everyone who has completed our recent survey. Uh, we put one out after the first three months of the workshop series so we can get your feedback. We're gonna drop a link in the chat. Um, Elise will put that in momentarily. Um, so you can take the survey if you haven't already. It's on our first three months of our series. So whether you've attended once or multiple weeks, uh, we invite you to please give us your honest feedback. It only takes three or four minutes and we're asking for feedback by this Friday. Before we start our workshop, a couple housekeeping things. Please remember to keep yourself muted during tonight's workshop to assure an uninterrupted presentation. And if you're new to Zoom, you can find the mute button in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. If you see a line through the microphone icon, that means that you are muted. We invite you to keep your camera on tonight if you are interested. It helps and it's nice to see everyone's faces and feel like we're having an in-person workshop. But if you prefer to keep your camera off, that's fine too. Uh, tonight's presentation will be about one hour. We are live streaming to Facebook and that will allow us to upload a recording afterwards to the district YouTube channel where you can find many of our past workshops available to rewatch. So with that, we're ready to get started. Um, tonight's, se tonight's session is using Zoom for club meetings. And you'll learn about the nuts and bolts of setting up and hosting a club meeting on Zoom, as well as tips and best practices for making your virtual meetings fun. Our presenters are Sylvia Ramirez from the Kiwanis Club of Chelsea, Massachusetts, and Amanda Brodkin from the Kiwanis Club of Westfield, Massachusetts. And we invited Sylvia and Amanda to collaborate on this session because of the creative ways they were using Zoom for their meetings right from early on during the pandemic. Um, they actually didn't know each other before tonight's workshop and preparing for it. So we really appreciate them getting to know each other in a virtual setting and working together to make this session possible. So you're in for a real treat, and I hope you enjoy hearing the ideas and tips and perspectives of two of our fellow New England and Bermuda Kiwanis clubs. So with that, 
Please join me in welcoming your presenters, Sylvia and Amanda. Hello, everyone. I am Sylvia Ramirez from the Kiwanis Club of Chelsea. And um, I've been in Kiwanis for a little bit less than 10 years. And I am the current president for our club. And I'm excited to be here um, with all of you. And with me co-presenting is my friend, my brand new friend, Hi everyone, I'm Amanda Brodkin. I am with the Kiwanis Club of Westfield and I have been a Kiwanian for just under five years and I am also our club president. Um, Sylvia and I, I think the connection that we've made is pretty um, typical of a lot of the relationships many of us have made over virtual connections in the past year. So I feel like I do have a new friend. Um, I'm sure a lot of you feel the same way with people that you haven't actually been in the same room with. Um, so Sylvia, we were each gonna give a fun fact about my, ourselves. Do you wanna give your fun fact? So my fun fact, for those of you that uh, don't know me in a personal level, um, I actually am a mom of nine. I have nine grandchildren and I also play volleyball vividly Wednesday nights, but not now during the pandemic. But those are some of the fun facts of Sylvia. Fun um, facts. That is a good one. I, I too was a volleyball player in high school, but um, I am about to launch a magazine. That's my exciting fact and my day job. I'm uh, starting a lifestyle magazine here in my town of West Springfield. So that's my fun fact. So let's get going with this. You ready? Awesome. Let's go. So tonight, uh, we're going to dive into uh, Zoom into virtual club meetings. And we know many of you have participated of these uh, leadership sessions, which we know some of you already have a lot of um, knowledge about how to do Zoom meetings. But we want to uh, um, dive into some of the things that have made our meetings fun and successful, um, you know, starting with tonight we'll learn how to um, have a meeting that is effective and it's fun as well. Uh, the things that you should know about the meetings, uh, some tips for technical successes during our meetings, and of course ideas for making virtual meetings more fun. And I think that is key uh, for us. Um, the advantages of Zoom obviously is, you know, with this situation of the pandemic, a lot of people are not comfortable with having in-person meetings. So they have the capacity of doing it via Zoom. One of the things that for our club in Chelsea was important was that we were in the, um, the city that got hit the most. So it was important that we had our meetings. Originally, we started them with, you know, a phone conference because, you know, nobody really, we knew about Zoom, but we didn't know about Zoom kind of thing. So um, a little bit after like maybe two weeks or four, two to three weeks, we decided to start using Zoom and it has been very effective. We started our Zoom um, meetings every other week and then quickly began continuing our meetings weekly, like if nothing had ever happened and we have been able to um, make them, you know, um, successful. Um, some people that are, do not want to be in person or, you know, want to keep social distance and whatnot will attend a Zoom meeting before they decide to do it in person. Uh, Zoom is free for participants, even though that the leader needs to have a paid account. Paid accounts uh, could be, you know, a personal account or to your business or your employer. Um, the, I believe the cost of the paid account is about $50 a month, so it's fairly reasonable. So your club should or could consider getting a paid account. That way other people can have an opportunity to also host meetings. And um, when you're not available, they can uh, obviously run the meetings. Uh, the Zoom can be used with a phone, a tablet, or a computer. There's some um, capacity that you cannot use with a phone. So it's best if you use it in a tablet or computer. I typically have Zoom meetings via um, my computer laptop. Uh, I talked a little bit about establishing uh, the guidelines for the meeting, you know, um, you know, you need to have the paid membership and usually is the club uh, president who has um, set up the account. Um, one of the ideas or the effective ways to have meetings is to have somebody set up the repeating meetings, you know, consecutively. 
um, and add the link to all members. Um, and of course, you should email your agenda before um, uh, before to the meeting. One of the things that I started recently with our club, since our club, the Chelsea Club grew uh, from December to January, we gained eight new members. I try to send an email like early in the week, like Monday or Tuesday and ask them, okay, what items do we wanna discuss this week? What do you wanna see in the agenda? What should be our conversation? And, um, and also, um, and that has helped. Uh, one of the, um, the important things is to also set up a password, a passcode. Um, we don't want any cats lingering around in our meetings. Uh, as you guys know, uh, some people have had challenges um, and uh, getting things or people that are not welcome and should not be part of your meeting. So you need to make sure that only the people that you want to be part of the meeting have access to it or also create a waiting room as well. Amanda. Okay, so I just, um, I have myself on mute because I apologize in advance. You probably have all experienced this, but I have a dog snoring behind me very loudly. So if you hear something weird, that's what it is. Um, so your meeting should run as much as close to a live meeting as you can possibly do it. So the sending the agenda out so that all members have it is really important. Um, one of the things that I find most awkward about Zoom is that when more than one person is trying to speak, you cancel each other out and you either step on each other in a way that is much more problematic than in an in-person gathering. Um, so it's really important that the meeting leader um, calls on participants to speak in turn because otherwise nobody gets heard um, and it can get it can get a little awkward and uncomfortable. Um, so sticking to the agenda for that reason is important. Um, part of calling on people is reminding them to unmute themselves. So I'm guessing that every one of us, us has been in a situation where we've been called on, we forgot that we're, we were muted and we're halfway through our point and then we realize nobody heard what we said, so we have to start over. So make sure that um, people are unmuting themselves when it's their turn to speak. Um, my club, uh, when we do our um, happy dollars, I as the club president will call on everybody. Um, they are all appearing in a different order on everybody else's screen. So it's up to me to make sure that each person knows when it's their turn to speak. Um, be cognizant of background noise. Um, even if there's music playing in another room of your house that doesn't sound very loud to you, it really can be um, disruptive to the rest of the meeting. So be aware of that. Um, when members are joining Zoom for the first time, some of them will probably have had some experience either using um, FaceTime calls on their phone, they may have used other tools for video conferencing like um, Google Meet. I personally prefer Zoom. I think it has more controls. I think the audio and visual quality is better than Google Meet. Um, so that's why we're talking about Zoom tonight. Um, it does have different view options right now. I don't know if you can see the view that I have set up, but because I'm sharing my screen, I can only see a couple of you. Um, Gallery view is what we call the Brady Bunch view, where everybody is set up in a little window of the same size. If you have more than maybe 16 or so people in your meeting and you're set up in gallery view, you're going to have at least a second page to your gallery. So you may have um, four pages of 15 people each if you have a 60 person meeting. So be aware that if someone is speaking, they may not be on your main page and you may have to scroll using the arrows to the left and right of your screen um, to see that to person speaking. Speaker view option is when um, you have the person who's speaking, their window pops up larger than anyone else's window. You'll have um, just kind of a row of people across the top of your screen and then the speakers 
wh whoever's voice is being recorded by the microphone, um, that person pops up in a larger window in the main part of your screen. Uh, everybody does not have to be using the same view at the same time. It is really um, convenient. Perhaps it's more comfortable for a lot of people to turn off their video during a meeting. Some people just aren't comfortable seeing themselves on video and um, they may be less inclined to participate if they have to see themselves while they're talking. Um, some for, for my club, we meet at six o'clock on Thursday night. So for some people that's dinner time. Um, I have no problem if a member wants to turn their video off so we don't see them eating their soup or whatever it is that is happening at six o'clock. Uh, this is kind of a pet peeve of mine, but I think it's really helpful if you're cognizant of your camera angle and your lighting. Um, the reason I say this is that a lot of people will have a, a window in their office or in their workspace. If the window is behind you, then your face is in shadow. And those of us who are seeing you on camera can't really make out your features very well. Um, and you look like a big dark blob. The other thing that I see often is that um, those of us who are coming to Zoom from phone or from iPad might hold it in their lap. And then what we end up with is this view. Like, so we get the up the nose and chin view, not terribly flattering and actually somewhat distracting. Um, and if you are one of those people who's doing that right now, I apologize because I'm not calling anyone out. I can't see you, but I'm guessing some of you are doing it. So just be aware that um, it can be a little distracting. The other thing that happens with people who are using iPads is that they'll come in with their finger to control the screen and that looks kind of weird too. So try and come around from the side if you can. Again, I'm being really nitpicky about this, but I've been on enough Zoom meetings and I'm sure you have too that, um, you know, it just makes it a whole lot easier when we're doing things with a little bit more consideration. Um, we have the opportunity now in Zoom to use tools for raising your hand. When there's a large crowd of us on a Zoom meeting, sometimes, you know, people, my, my club members will just wave their hands and I can call on them that way. But when there's a large crowd, sometimes it's easier. Sylvia just raised her hand using the buttons on the bottom of the screen labeled reaction. So that gives you the option to um, use a clap icon, a wave icon. There's there's like a party horn. Um, that's just another way to, to let somebody know that you have something to say. Um, oh, back to the light subject. I wanted to share this with you for a second. This is something I bought on um, Amazon. This is a little ring light and I'm turning it on right now. I don't know if it makes a whole lot of difference for how I appear to you guys, but I wanted to show it to you. Um, it was very, I think it was like $12 on Amazon. I can clip it to the top of my laptop or to the top of my phone and it's it charges by USB. It's a really good option if you have lousy lighting. Um, it's just a, another way to make yourself a little bit more um, engaged in the meeting. So I think that's all I needed to talk about on this screen. So I'm gonna go over some tech tips and I would like to first um, tell you that I am not a tech expert by any means. I've been Zooming, zooming for about as long as the rest of you have. Um, I've learned things through trial and error and I'm sure a lot of you know things that I don't know. So at the end, I would love to hear um, your suggestions as well. But so the things that I'd like to go over are to, um, suggest that your club members set up a default photograph for themselves so that when they do go off, when they turn off their video, that they have a picture of them so that we know who they are. It's not a necessity by any means, otherwise their name will show up and that's fine too. But um, Sylvia just set, turned off her video and now we can see her, her profile picture while she goes to, you know, maybe get a drink of water or something. Um, you have the option during a meeting and when you're setting up your Zoom account to change your screen name. And my club has a lot of fun with this. Um, some of you probably know Brad Casson, who's um, a longtime Westfield Kiwanian. He has been club president and um, he's been around for the club quite a, quite a while. He's, Brad is known for his good sense of humor. And so he will frequently change his name in a meeting. 
Um, one day last summer, he changed his name to Brad No Pants, which I thought was very funny. So I changed my name to Brad No Pants, but um, I forgot to change it back to Amanda Brodkin. And the next day when I went into um, a meeting that I had, my niece, who's a senior at Tufts, had invited me to sit on her in on her thesis defense Zoom. So I tried to get in the meeting as Brad No Pants, and guess what? I wasn't allowed in. And my niece has forgiven me, but um, that was a really painful lesson Grace. to learn. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's my daughter in the background thinking she <laughs> apparently hadn't heard that story. So change if you change your name for fun or for whatever, be sure to change it back so you know the next day you don't end up getting embarrassed the way that I did. Um, the chat tool within Zoom is a great feature for you to share, um, you can share PDF files, you can share conversation back and forth between one member and another, you can share it between yourself and the whole group or select members. Um, it's just a feature that you can have a little side conversation on. Um, our club has used it to link to other web pages in the meeting um, when we've been talking about examples of fundraisers or other things that we want to share with the club in that moment. It's easy to use the chat feature to do that. Um, I've mentioned this probably at least four times already. If you're not the speaker, it's best to mute yourself so that we don't all hear what's going on in the back of your household. Um, we've all used breakout rooms in the workshop sessions that the New England or Bermuda District has set up. Um, I couldn't figure out how to do that for the longest time. Then I realized there's a setting in my Zoom homepage. So when I'm setting up a meeting, I'll see you later. Um, when I'm setting up a meeting, I have a setting screen in my Zoom account. And so I hadn't uh, enabled breakout rooms in that. So now I'm able to, to set up break or breakout rooms if I want to. And that's just a way of taking a large group and breaking it down into smaller groups. You can um, come in and out of the breakout rooms during the meeting. You can switch out the, the participants in one room for another. Um, it's a great way to do just smaller scale conversations and networking. Um, screen sharing, we're, we've been doing a lot of that. The um, ability to screen share is held by the meeting leader, but the meeting leader has the ability to um, enable other users to share their screens. So, for example, tonight, Brian is the meeting leader, Brian and Elise are, but they were able to enable me to share my screen with you. So you all are seeing my screen from my home in West Springfield, Massachusetts. The whiteboard is a tool that um, I recently learned about. I haven't actually used it, but um, uh, where did I find it? Sylvia, do you remember where the whiteboard was? It I need is. to mute myself in order to, I, I don't think that you have that option when you are. Um, when, when I'm screen sharing. sharing your screen. Okay. So Whiteboard is one of the tools that's up on, on your tool um, tab, I guess I would call this. Um, it's probably best used um, in educational and academic settings. Um, it allows the person who is sharing their whiteboard to uh, type or share photos or do things right from this main screen. So it's not dissimilar to what we're seeing here in the PowerPoint presentation. Um, it's just another way of sharing what's on your screen. The annotation tool um, is similar to the whiteboard in that, okay, so Sylvia, are you annotating? Yes, yeah, so um, it lets you, you can add text. Sylvia is drawing right now. You can just kind of go in here and emphasize. It's, it's for lack of a better description, it's kind of like having a little laser pointer just to kind of emphasize what is you want your viewers to see on the, the board at the present time. Um, it's something that I think a lot of us didn't realize at first when we started doing Zoom, everybody's screen looks different. So um, if you're in a gallery setting with eight other people, so there are nine of you in the grid and say I'm in a Zoom with Sylvia and Brian, 
Sylvia might be in the upper right corner of my screen, Brian might be in the middle, but you might see it differently. Brian might be down on the bottom and Sylvia could be over to the left. So like I'm pointing around to parts of the screen right now, if, you know, for me, Sylvia is way over there, but you might see her up there. So bear that in mind. It, it doesn't really mean anything. It's not that important, but it's just good to know that everybody doesn't see the exact same screen in terms of how people are um, positioned on the grid. Um, the last thing I wanted to point out on this slide is that we can record Zoom meetings, which can be really very handy um, in two circumstances. First of all, if you have somebody who you know wants to participate in the meeting but can't be there, you can record it and share it with that person later. Um, the other situation is if your secretary is not available and no one else is um, able to take notes, if you have the meeting recording to go back to, you can then go back and um, uh, dictate and annotate the, the content of the meeting from what was recorded on the Zoom. Um, last little thing I wanted to mention is if you really wanna up your Zoom game, you will get non-glare coating on your glasses. This has been bothering me for 12 months. Uh, I haven't done anything about it yet, but I would love to be able to read what's on the screen and not have glare in my eyes at the same time, but haven't done it yet. If you try it, I'm curious to know how it goes for you. So moving on here, we are going to talk about Ooh, I didn't know that the annotations would move along with us. Can we get rid of those? I, I will get rid of those. Okay. I'm going to go back here because I messed this up. Um, so I want to go back to the slideshow. Oops. Let's just go back. Where was I? Making it fun. Okay. Um, There we go. And that was my annotation. Mm -hmm. So our club, like Sylvia's, uh, we've been meeting by Zoom, not exclusively since the beginning of the pandemic. Over the summer, we did meet in person um, at an outdoor setting at a country club that had a big, beautiful deck that they let us use. It was a, not our usual location. It was nice to be able to do that. Um, but barring that, we've been indoors since I think the beginning, probably the middle of October, beginning of November. And a couple of times we've tried to mix it up a little bit just to get past the point of business. The fact that we can't really talk to each other in a meeting has been a bit of a bummer. Um, so our club took a page from the district workshops and we did a trivia night about three or four weeks ago for our club. Um, one of our members came up with the questions and was our MC. Um, and we just had a blast. Our, our members, uh, we broke into breakout groups, small teams of three people, um, just had a really fun time with it. And I would recommend that either um, as a, a set standalone meeting or add some element into each meeting that isn't business related and just lets you socialize and have fun with each other. So some of the other things that um, I've read about, I haven't really applied these too often, are having a theme night for your meetings. If you, you know, wanted to do something like a, um, a Caribbean theme or uh, Cinco de Mayo is not too far out. Um, you know, if you guys want to have everybody dress in green for St. Patrick's Day, it just adds a little bit of um, uh, camaraderie to the meeting without distracting too much. Um, the aforementioned Brad Casson from my club has a vast collection of hats. So it would be fun to do a hat night and see, you know, who could outdo each other. Um, again, it's not really adding anything to the content of the meeting, but it just does make things a little bit fun. I haven't done this in Zoom or in Kiwanis, but um, I have played bingo with my girlfriends on Zoom, and that is a lot of fun to do, too. And again, you do have to have somebody who's willing to be the bingo caller and not 
be a player, but that's a fun way to connect with your fellow club members and just to have a good time with them. You could also um, use the, the, the whiteboard to play hangman. Um, that's something, you know, silly fun, but just a, a good way to, to pull people in a different direction. The last thing I'm going to point out, um, if your club, so my club isn't a big one for singing, you know, we'll sing if somebody has a birthday, but I, I know some clubs um, are a little more involved in um, singing together. I have found that it is almost impossible to speak together as a group on Zoom. When we say the Pledge of Allegiance, we are all over the place and it is it's comical. It, it kind of takes some of the solemnity of the pledge away from it because we're all over the place. But if you are trying to sing happy birthday to somebody in your club, just be advised that it's it's going to be awkward and accept that and expect it. And, and that's okay. So that kind of comes to the end of my technical discussion. I am hoping that Elise has some questions. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen at this point. Is that okay, Brian? Yep, that's fine. Okay. I, I so want I will... to add that um, for our club in Chelsea, one of the things that we've incorporated is like a personal check-in. You know, how are you doing? How's the family? You know, tell me about your weekend or your week or your fun vacation if you got to go away or whichever. I think it breaks a little bit of the... Um, the being in Zoom all day. Some of us spend a lot of hours in Zoom and that's helpful. And also we have a couple of members that have access to not only changing their virtual background, but also setting up video filters. I still don't have access to those, but I have some members that during the middle of a conversation pop up with a crown or a unicorn hat or something like that. And that makes it totally fun during the meeting. Um, I don't know if there's any questions that some of the members that, that are participating have for us. Yeah, we actually do have a few questions that have come in and maybe what we can do is I'll pose some of these questions and if we have time at the end, Amanda, I saw your slide of what's worked for your club and maybe we can invite folks to speak up and share what's worked for them. So the first one, we had a couple questions on this topic but um so i'll merge them together it's what is the attendance for your club meetings um, we have trouble getting members to join us and then how do you uh, get members or encourage members to turn out for meetings we've had good speakers and programs but struggle with getting a good turnout well i'll start um for chelsea we were 70 members and we grew up to 24 so we still are relatively small club. Um, one of the things that makes our meetings successful in attendance is the fact that we are alternating our meetings. We have a lunch meeting and then we have an evening meeting. And, um, you know, we don't have the expectation of everyone to join, but we are recording the meeting. So anyone have access to look at the meeting in our YouTube channel. And also, um, you know, some people are able to break for the lunch and, and participate and some people are not able to and then that's why they participate in the evening. So our meetings are on Thursday. So tomorrow we'll have an evening meeting. Next week we'll have a lunch meeting and like that we alternate. So we, we pretty much have good attendance. Um, I'll say anything from the minimum I think that we'll have is about 10 people, but you know, 12 people or more. That's for our club, at least in Chelsea. Our club has not done quite as well. Um, I think our club is so used to being together in person that uh, some people get Zoom exhausted. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of folks who are uh, working from home during the day and are on Zoom for hours during the day. So by the time you get around to six o'clock, some of those folks just aren't, aren't up for it. And one of the things about Zoom is that, I mean, we are right in each other's faces and there's no break from 
the from the eye contact from the proximity so it can be really tiring um, if you're in more than you know I don't think I've had a day where I've had more than three maybe four at the most hours on zoom but it's tiring because you're always on and you know that people are looking at you um, and it's 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 exhausting so for that reason we've our attendance has gone down from our in-person meetings. When we were, um, even in the fall, when we were meeting outdoors at that um, country club deck, we were getting probably on average about 24 members. Our club has 51 um, on Zoom. If we get 12, that's pretty good. Uh, you know, we've had as few as nine and we've had as, as many as, We've had more than 20, but usually it's in the net proximity of, I'd say 12, 13, maybe 14 on average. This is Mary Skaggs. Hello. Hi, Mary. I'm a president of the Orono Old Town Kiwanis in Orono, Maine. And actually we've been experiencing just the opposite, uh, especially this time of the year, we have a lot of snowbirds who are gone for the winter and our regular meetings we might have 15 people at the most for in-person meetings is what we've been experiencing in the past and the zoom meetings we've been having upwards of 20 and last week we had 34 members and 40 over 40 people uh, including the inner clubs. So we've been experiencing something totally different. Our membership is up to over 60. We just had 12 new members join and actually our induction was last week uh, for our new members. So it's just kind of interesting. And some of those snowbirds have been able to join us where they haven't been able to in, the, uh, in, in years past because they can't come to in-person meetings. So uh, we've just found it very interesting that uh, we've had much better attendance uh, via the Zoom. Well, and it sounds like you've had membership success too, Mary. How, what prompted that? Was there something about the Zoom, do you think that was more successful with attracting people to, to join? Well, we took advantage of the uh, Qantas International uh, free membership, mm -hmm. and we did a big mailing to all of our members in um, October and sent them a lot of information, including a membership application and some uh, very detailed information for them to pass on to any prospective members. And from that, we got 10 new members. And then um, with, um, you know, with our district offering again, the free membership, we picked up a couple new people. So we had, we inducted 12 new members last week, which was very exciting for us. So we're up over 60 members now. That's so we're, yeah, we're pretty excited about that. And I noticed that um, at least one of our new members is on tonight. So Jim Babbitt, welcome, Jim. That's wonderful. That's great. I think, I think that um, having the, uh, the opportunity to get anyone from, it doesn't matter where you're at, you can be in your state or you can be down in Florida or you can be visiting your children in California you know, you can join in and um, still participate. I think one of the things that for our club, we made a decision is once we're able to get together again, we will still provide the option to zoom in into our meeting because we know there is people that are not able, either they don't live in our town or they, um, or they are traveling because of work or for whatever reason, or they are down in Florida for the winter so they can have the opportunity to join our, our the, the club meeting. I think it's also important to remind our members that if you know they have the option to participate in the different conversations, whether it's a service project or a fundraiser or um, talking about scholarships or any other topic that you, you know, not everybody, not all your members are gonna be interested in every single one of the topics and also provide them opportunities for them to participate of your subcommittee meetings and whatnot. I think it's important to remind, to remind them of that for participation. But um, just like Mary was mentioning, there is people that have had an increase of participation because you know anybody can log in from whatever they're at. And I think the number of people working from, from home 
and having a little more flexibility to their schedules probably has contributed to that as well. Um, my club has a couple of snowbirds who haven't joined in. And so I'm encouraged to hear that that has been successful for your club, Sylvia, that's great. Well, one, one of the things that we found also was that some of our members really did not enjoy coming and sharing a meal and paying for a meal, but they've been coming to the Zoom meetings because they, they don't have that, that expense. We've also gone to having two meetings a month, uh, the first and third Tuesdays of the month, and we're thinking about the possibility of having one in-person meeting and one Zoom meeting when we can all get back together. And we're hoping that we'll have a location where those in-person meetings can also be uh, hooked up to Zoom so people can join us if they can't, you know, if they can't be there or don't want to be there to join us for a meal. So um, we're looking at all kinds of different options and those, those are some of them. That's wonderful. Good. So we had a couple more questions that have come in and one you kind of just hit on, but if maybe you could both talk to a little bit further is once it's safe to be in person, do you think your club will continue to offer any of your club business committee or board meetings virtually or kind of, um, as was just said, or do you think you might stream them for those who cannot join you in person? At least in Chelsea, we made the decision that we will continue to do Zoom meetings every week, even when we get in person, we do need that you know, our club is a family and I'm sure all of us feel that way with our different clubs. We need that bonding time. And when it's safe, we will eventually do that. But we wanna provide the opportunity that we have some members that are outside of the state for the winter or whatnot, that they can also be part of the conversation and decision-making. Um, because for a small club, it's important to have as much participation as possible. I think our club will do the same. We took a survey in um, the early part of the winter and um, the, the consensus was that we wanted to have um, both kinds of meetings. Now that may change. I will, I will redo the survey um, in the spring, um, but originally people were feeling that they, would, they did like both options. Uh, we were getting people who were more attracted to the Zoom meetings for some of the reasons um, that you've all hit upon, either for convenience, for um, saving the expense of a meal. But ultimately, it comes down to most of our club pr would prefer to be together in person. Um, I saw Kevin Tierney raise his hand. Kevin? Is there accessible on uh, YouTube or some other uh, public facility an example of a, a meeting uh, conducted on Zoom so we would be able to see 20, 25 minutes or so of a successful Zoom meeting? Is there such an access that we could look at? I would imagine that there is, but I'm, I couldn't point you to one. Um, I'd be happy to invite you to my club's meeting tomorrow night, which will be on Zoom um, starting at 6 o'clock. If you'd like to be a part of that, let me know. Beyond that, I, I don't have specifics. Yeah, I want to add that for a club, we have some members that are not, haven't been very successful with Zoom, but we've had one of our members who volunteer to go through, uh, do a, a tutorial kind of thing to show them how to go about it because they were linking in into the call, but they were not able to you know, mute themselves or they didn't know how to turn on the camera and whatnot. So those little tips are important for some of your members and, and you should provide that option that you know, if, if you're not able to get into Zoom and you're not enjoying your experience, let us know that way we can walk you through it. You know, one of us will, will be willing to call you and help you how to get make it happen. I don't think many of the participants of the workshops are having that issue, but maybe some of the members in your club are having that issue and you don't know about it because you haven't asked a question. Well, actually, uh, kind of going into Kevin's question a little bit, um, two questions of A, do you record your club meetings? And B, is it okay to record the club meetings or do you have to get some sort of permission from your attendees first? 
Well, I, at least in Chelsea, we're recording our meetings. Um, we told members that the meeting is being recorded. Um, uh, it's good for like, like Amanda mentioned, for our secretary to take proper notes and also for um, to post in our YouTube channel when there's some members that are not able to participate. Um, you know, we do give them the option if you don't want to be part of the recording option, you know, you can, you know, not ha not be live and, and you know, and, and shut off your camera like this, which you have the option. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a personal decision. I think you need to tell them that you're being, you're going to record a meeting. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Our club does not usually record. We don't, you know, we don't have the need for that. Uh, on a regular basis, we have on occasion, and we do let people know that it is being recorded. No one, no one has had a problem with it. I don't think anybody is afraid that it's going to embarrass them or go viral or anything. But there is always that risk, I suppose. One tip I just want to throw out before the next question: um, It took me a long time to realize that the settings in your Zoom application. So if you've downloaded your Zoom are very minimal compared to all of the other Zoom settings you can set if you go to zoom.com and log in there. You can control so much. And there is a feature in there that you can check off that attendees are told when they enter that the meeting is being recorded to make them have, they're essentially getting permission by staying in the meeting. If they don't want it, to, if they don't want to be part of that, they can always, you know, step out or turn their camera off. But it's kind of a way I usually forget to mention if I'm in a work meeting, if it's being recorded, this kind of gives it an automatic notice to your attendees. It's buried somewhere in the Zoom settings section on either streaming meetings or recording meetings. That's a great tip, Brian. I did not know that. If, if anyone is using Zoom a lot, I recommend taking a half an hour someday, going to zoom.com, going into the settings. You can get lost for days and days looking at them all, but it helps to see some of the different features that may not be enabled that um, are actually hidden in there. There are also a lot of um, YouTube videos that will walk you through specific features. Like, so the, the whiteboard, which I was not familiar with, I learned about through YouTube, but you can learn pretty much anything on YouTube if you want. Well, and that's a very good segue. We have a, a couple like really nuts and bolts questions about features and one of them was what are some of the things you would use the whiteboard for my club has not used it i think um i would use the whiteboard the same way that i would use um a presentation application to um type in to write in i i would i honestly haven't used it um i think it would be better applied in an academic setting. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have suggestions on that? I, I We haven't used it either, uh, the whiteboard. Uh, I know it is a, a, a setting, uh, you know, a tool that you can use, but I haven't used it. We are having a retreat coming up in a few weeks, so I probably will be using it then uh, since we're doing a virtual retreat uh, or a strategic plan, you know, like we do every year. Uh, but I haven't used it. So if anybody has any tips, please share. <laughs> One other thing I wanted to mention, not related to, oh, I see Elisa's hand up. Go ahead. I clicked the raise hand feature and then I clicked reactions and then lowered my hand. Look at that, using all the skills that we learned today. Um, but I was imagining when you guys were talking about using the whiteboard application, um, that it could be really useful to clubs in terms of planning events. So if you were to maybe create or throw up the whiteboard and then kind of think through maybe step by step what you need to do to plan a new event or kind of create a timeline that everybody can see. So you're not saying, okay, in one month we're going to do this. And then somebody else saying, wait, I didn't catch that. What did you say? You know, you're able to kind of all track the same information. I think I've never right used it that way. That. Yeah, no, I, I I could see it um, similar to um, opening up that annotation tool, just kind of to use it as a recording device for ty typing, collecting everybody's thoughts and um, input and make sure that everybody is 
truly on the same page and seeing the same information. That's a good point. Um, I was going to mention to you all, I'm going to just go off in a different direction for a second. Um, Governor Dennis said I could do this, so I'm doing it. Our club, the Westfield Kiwanis Club, um, had its annual auction this past weekend, and many of you have helped out with it in the past. It in the past has been a live television auction that ran uh, for about eight hours the first Sunday of March for the past 20 plus years, but we could not do that this year. So like everything else in the world, we went online and we used a platform called Octria. Um, it was very smooth. It was very easy. I think it had a lot of benefits. If any of you have done an online auction and used a tool like this, I, I'm wondering if you would agree with me that it had a lot of benefits. I felt like our um, bidders were able to get more information about the items. Elise is nodding because she was a bidder and so she's, she's on the other side of it. Um, I also uh, felt like it was great for our sponsors and donors because we were able to link to their websites, include their phone numbers, give them a lot more visibility than they, um, not a lot more, but, but a different kind of visibility than they were able to get in our previous auction. So um, there was, you know, it was trial by fire. For, there were a couple of moments of, you know, oh my gosh, are we going to get this all together? But it worked really well. We had a successful auction. Our bidders all seemed happy. Our sponsors seemed happy. And um, our auction chairperson lived to tell the tale. So um, I would not discourage any of you from going that route if that's something that you're considering doing. I think that Sylvia and I have pretty much um, said all we have to say. Anything else that uh, anyone care to ask at this point? We have one more question that came in at least through the chat and it's to Sylvia. Sylvia, where did you get that really cool Kiwanis background and how do we do that for our own backgrounds? I actually Googled it and got it. So I'll be happy to share it um i'll write down my email address here uh and and you guys can go ahead and email me and i'll be happy to share it and can you talk about how you uh do virtual backgrounds and how you actually put that in sure so i go into the stop video um icon down here so right where you mute the microphone the next the next um icon is the video camera you click the arrow that goes up and you can choose a virtual background and it pops up a different window and then it gives you the background and filter so there's two options here you can do a non like you can see my bed now you can see my work uh, or another background I use, Kiwanas, my a few work, work ones, and then my Christmas one. And that's my bed back there. So don't look at the mess. Um, and I have one for Kiwanas. I'm actually in the process of creating one for our club with our club logo. Um, so yeah, I'll be happy is to it, share my- is it basically just a JPEG file, a visual, like a photograph? Can you use so, any image? You can pretty use any image. You need to make sure that it's uh, that the system that Zoom allows it because they require like a green background uh, sometimes. But you can unclick that. I have a green screen, and you can add any JPEG in the back. You can also rotate yourself, but make sure that you get back into the right version because I've been in meetings and I find people this way and they don't know how to switch themselves. So just so you know. Excellent. Well, oh, I see Sylvia, it. Amanda, do you have any closing remarks or anything else you want to add? I would just say that um, this has been a learning curve for most of us. And a lot of us feel awkward doing this. A lot of us have been forced to do this because of work 
um, but we're all in it together and we've all learned and you know it's just another way for us to connect so don't don't feel awkward and by any means if there's anything that um i've learned it's just to 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 google or to youtube and you will find the answer out there because like i said i'm not a tech expert um i'm sure most of you know a lot more than i do but just you know it my my theory about technology has always been that somebody smarter than I already thought the answer to whatever it is that I'm asking. So if you think it's a possibility, it probably is, and and you can find it on YouTube. Excellent, Sylvia. Anything you want to add in before we wrap up? All right, I'm wondering if we lost Sylvia. It looks like she might have she might have bumped out of the room. All right, well, we will wrap up. Um, even though she's not here, let's give a big round of applause to Amanda and to Sylvia um, for presenting tonight's workshop and for stepping up to lead this session. Um, that was really great. I learned some new stuff, and I'm sure everybody on here did as well. So thank you both for taking the time to get to know each other as Kiwanis from two separate clubs and to put this together. So as we wrap up, I have some concluding remarks. Um, first off, please remember, if you haven't already, to enter your name and your club in the chat so that we can keep an accurate attendance for tonight. And you will be able to find that in the Google Drive, and we will drop the link uh, momentarily. So you can log in and see who has been in attendance at each of our workshops. And then you can report that number of interclubs if your club qualifies to your club secretary. Um, we have three more workshops lined up this month. I'm going to ask Elise to share her screen and pull up the graphic of what we have in store for you for the rest of March. So next Wednesday, March 17th, um, we have our district-wide interclub. This is going to be a really exciting night uh, where we uh, try to capture the feeling of an in-person interclub um, by giving you the opportunity to connect with Kiwanians from across the district. So it's going to be led by our district membership team, Robert Wiley and Daryl Sylvia. And you will get a chance to learn not only about how interclubs work, but you're going to get a chance to go into a breakout room and have a casual conversation with some other Kiwanians, along with a facilitator from the district. Um, you may have already signed up. If you haven't, it's not too late. And when you register, you'll be able to select your choice of a breakout room. And we will do our best, or I should say the membership team is going to do their best to put you into one of your top choices for a breakout room. The topics are club meetings, membership, service, public relations and communications, or interclubs and service leadership programs. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, Bob asked me to announce that he wants everyone to come in uh, your festive gear. Um, probably from something that was suggested tonight by Amanda and Sylvia, and to dress uh, dress in green or festive for St. Patrick's Day. So please remember to Perfect. do that um, and come with your Irish and St. Patrick's pride on for next week's district-wide interclub. The week after, on March 24th, um, we have our district parliamentarian, David Whiteschool, who will be presenting Holding a Successful Club Meeting. And Dave is going to offer practical suggestions on what should happen at your annual meeting for your club and how to prepare for that meeting. Uh, as a reminder, clubs are required to hold their annual meetings, which includes your election for, of officers, before May 15th of each year. So we wanted to get this session in uh, several weeks before that deadline to give you all the information on your club's annual meeting. And we'll wrap up the month on March 31st with a conversation between our district governor, Dennis Murphy, and our district governor-elect, Gayla Bartlett. And they're going to sit down for a conversation um, to talk about Dennis's background, his goals for this year, his Kiwana service, and more. And so because we couldn't have uh, in-person conferences this year, we wanted to give you a chance to get to know your district governor. So join us next week, uh, sorry, join us at the end of the month to get to know Dennis and you also have the chance to ask some questions. Please encourage your fellow club members to sign up for the rest of the March sessions. We have this information on our district Facebook page, in our district Facebook group, 
um, at the registration link, which we will drop in the chat and on the district website. So it is everywhere, hopefully easy to find, and it should be in your inbox at least once a month through our district emails. If any of this is new to you, if you're a new member or you've been around and you aren't familiar with our uh, website, Facebook pages, or getting the emails, just send us a message at education at newenglandcoanus.org and we will be happy to help you out and get you the information you need. Um, please also remember that if you want to rewatch a session or if you have club members who couldn't join us, recordings of most sessions are available on our YouTube channel and they're also on Facebook after the recording is done. Um, Elise, uh, one of our committee members, uh, Denorpia, has been working really hard to keep an updated folder of resources from all of our workshops on Google Drive. So there is a link that she will put in the chat, and you can also find it every week, it's the same link, in your email confirmation. And that will take you to a folder called Virtual Workshop Materials, and you can explore the files to go to a week's uh, session that you may have missed or you want to take a look at the presentation, the slides, other information. So make sure you explore that folder and take a look at some of the stuff that's there. That's also where we will post attendance for each of our weekly workshops. We won't post individual names, but we'll post the clubs that are represented so your secretary can report with your clubs. Um, a reminder that we invite you to please complete our brief survey about our first three months of workshops. We are reading all the responses and taking your requests into consideration as we plan workshops into the spring and hopefully into the summer. So we appreciate your honest feedback and your ideas. And again, it only takes three or four minutes to do. So if you could spare three or four minutes before this Friday, we'd really appreciate it. Um, I would be remiss if I did not profusely thank our district education committee, uh, which includes Elise Denorfia, Judy Barrett and David Griffin. I hope you'll all give them a big round of applause. Um, they are working tirelessly behind the scenes to help put all of these sessions together. Um, it takes a lot to pull together um, a weekly workshop and to keep it going. So we're going into month four um, and your energy as attendees really helps fuel us. So thank you and please remember to thank Elise, Judy or David if you happen to be emailing with them. So with that, Another really big thank you to Amanda and to Sylvia for presenting tonight, for each of you for joining us this evening. Um, we are, we're very excited that we've had some Kiwanians from other districts joining us each week. So if any of you are new or from outside New England and Bermuda, welcome and thank you for joining us. We hope you will join us again. Um, to everyone, we hope to see you next Wednesday for the district-wide interclub. As always, please stay safe, be well, and thank you so much for being a Kiwanian. Have a great night.